Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to The Sixth Sense, my special guest medium today, Mr. Tony Stockwell. Now, as I'm just trying to get a connection here, I actually want to be coming to this lady here uh, in the centre. Is that all right? Yes, please. Is that all right? Yeah. I think I'm with you or just in this area again, but I do think I'm with you. I get the feeling as I'm being drawn to your energy that you must come from either a very extended family or a big family unit because you've got loads of spirit people, you know? Yes. So me and you we could be here a week and I could, <laughs> you know, five minutes ago and I'd still be here. There's loads and loads and loads of people here coming forward and trying to connect with you. Have you ever, right, worked as a secretary or worked for some kind of home office or worked in some kind of like big government type building? Is it the home office? Home office, yes. And you work for the home office? Yeah. What's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty impressed yourself there. <laughs> All right, well, well done. Now, Spirit, I've come close to you not just for survival evidence, it's not just for survival evidence, mm. but what I do know is that you are to champion the cause of young people to get young people up off their what's it's living a good positive life you know it's important here and God has chose you for some mission in life and it is all to do about the young ones so you're yes. with me there definitely. you definitely understand that definitely. and you must have had some connection with this before or you've got something you do with this now what does that mean it's identifying children okay. as future leaders of tomorrow disadvantaged children as future leaders of tomorrow oh that's that ain't bad is it <laughs> I don't know if you heard that but I'm really impressing myself now that's fair <laughs> enough well done because it's a real big thing I'm hearing here darling that God has chosen her for this purpose of helping the young ones get them up, get them out, and get in a, living a good life. And I know as they tell me of this information, the healing that you will bring in this world will be immense. Now, do you or your family understand a young man that would have died in very suspicious circumstances? It feels like a murder that yes. I'm referring to. That makes sense? Yes. That's it. Because um, there's a lot of people there, but the man that keeps coming to me here is, is the, the, the clearest one. And he keeps saying to me those words, I was murdered. That's, that's my thing. Okay, yes. you understand? And um, I feel, darling, that he wasn't just uh, attacked by one person. Again, I feel there's more than one person there, there committing this crime or in some way taking, him, taking his life. We believe so, yes. You believe so, okay. Well, I know so, so I don't want to make it more than it is, but I tell you this as information because this is what I'm being told. And I know that the boy that I, I have here, uh, is, again, is a handsome-looking boy. You understand? He's a good-looking lad. I thought he's a strapping lad. You know, had a good body, a good physique on him. He had all the world in front of him. You understand this? Yes. I also feel that he was a very intelligent boy, too. I must say academically no. so much. Because I don't think I could stand school with him, really. No. I don't. I couldn't. So I'm more likely to buy off or you know go down the park but he was bright that's what I think bright but in the same way he did not get the opportunities or the schooling or the support there that he needed now this same boy that I refer to in my love I feel that would, there would have been there a disconnection to do with his dad also so had his father been divorced from his mother or had his father gone away some long time before I feel almost that he grew up without the support of his father that's correct. As a result of that, I know that he got into the wrong crowd, this boy, as well. You understand did, me? Yes. But he ain't a bad boy. No, Don't be no. run away with the idea. He's not a bad boy. But I feel the people that he kind of got involved with for like some kind of like society or protection or something like that, they were rotten. I don't yes. like them at all. I don't know. Suddenly I've got a big scar on me here in my chest here. Do you know he had a cut here? It did, yeah. From here to here. Yeah, you're stabbed, stabbed in the heart. Done your father, he's in the spirit world, your dad's That's correct, yeah. he's, he's there now. And I thought him for a little while now, and I think um, that he's been very patient with me, but he's coming in too. Now, to say that he's proud of you would be a massive understatement, to be honest. Yes. I know he thinks you're beautiful and very, very, very clever. Come on, Dad. <laughs> but your dad was bright in life too. Yes. Your dad was clever in life. And your dad was an important man in the life too. Yeah. People respected him and looked up to him. Yeah. Now it's your father that wants to include this young man next to you. Because not only does he guide you, he thinks you're smashing. He thinks you're great, you. So I know that he is almost like, for you, like a guardian angel yeah. in the spirit world. That's what I know. Remember these words. Because he only wants good things to come to you. And I know, oh, 
you're really making me feel weird now because I know that with you we will see good things. Do you, have you deaf in this ear then, darling? No. Who's deaf in the left ear? My father was. Your father was. Oh. Deaf, mutton, proper? Yeah, um, I became hard of hearing. Okay. Um, Mainly left side for me, darling, because I, I feel <sighs> there's a hand on my ear. So if your father was a bit funny on that ear, that'll do for me. Bless yeah. your hearts. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you very much. My father's side of the family, they're huge, and there's still a lot I haven't met. Darling, your father is in the spirit world, your dad's cousin, yeah. and your dad was an important man. Yeah. People respected him. My father was brought up in South Africa. He was a bricklayer and also a um, political activist. He was incarcerated as well. He was banned from attending any activity where there were more than two people involved. He was under house arrest. Always practice equality, doesn't matter where or what. He practice equality and that is where I, I suppose I get some of it from that I want to do the same. You work for the Home Office? Yeah. That was really weird. I do work for the Home Office and I have done so for 20 odd years. Have you ever, right, worked as a secretary? I did work as a secretary as well before and for the Home Office as well, one of the other departments and I still work for the Home Office to this day. You are to champion the cause of young people. Three years ago, exactly, I went to um, a conference um, in America, a National Black MBA conference, and some children from England went as well, and they've got a program called Future Leaders of Tomorrow. And these are basically um, kids have been identified, not with um, great, good grades, but shows potential. Um, and one of the things I want to do with it was to and I've spoken to some people about it. I want to um, launch this program in South Africa for the previously disadvantaged children through poverty will never be able to, m to go anywhere. Um, so I wanted to, um, I've spoken, I want to pilot it and I'm bringing one young child next month to England. To say that he's proud of you would be a massive understatement. My dad is proud of me because of my dad was also a sort of an activist and obviously since he passed I've taken on that role in the family. He became ill and went to South Africa. He was admitted into hospital. He subsequently died three months later, but I was there throughout his illness and stayed with him right to the end. It feels like a murder that yes. I'm referring to. When I was young, um, my parents um, fostered three children. One of them um, was found murdered in the field, um, was stabbed in the heart. Do you know they had a cut here? He was lying there, obviously dead, and there was a big hole where it was obviously was stabbed, just in his chest, yeah, it was just a big hole. He grew up without the support of his father. He was very young when his father died, and they, were, they all grew up in an orphanage. I know that he got into the wrong crowd, this boy. It was believed that he was murdered because the person he stayed with was a drug dealer, and um, he was afraid that um, this boy had enough information to actually send him to prison, to have him arrested. Who's deaf in the left ear? My father was. If you talk to him and he didn't hear, he wouldn't admit that he was deaf in the one ear. Um, but he did become deaf and actually they, they found that he'd, um, his ear was blocked. Um, and they, they, they sort of had a syringe, they syringed this ear. And I don't think it ever got much better, but I think it sort of, with age, he just sort of lost the deafness. I know that he is almost like, for you, like a guardian angel yeah. in the spirit world. I'm really proud because I always felt that if anything, um, if anything has to happen to my son, my dad would be the one who could make it happen. Um, my son being very stubborn sometimes, and he knew that granddad was the one who could make him see the light. I've got to go. Okay, bless yeah. your hearts. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you. I thought my dad would come through, um, but I thought it also would bring my mother through. Um, I'm very surprised at this young lad that was murdered who came through. Um, I really didn't expect that at all, but I, I thought if anything my dad would have got through. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please thank my guest today, Mr Tony Stockwell.